Thank you indeed, Madam Speaker. Now, ladies and gentlemen, on the proposition side from Sciences Po, may I call upon the third speaker, the third speaker, Ms. Joanna Bouchterha. Oh, oh, yeah, it's working. Dear Mr. Chen, distinguished members of the jury, honorable members of the opposition, fellow members of the proposition, ladies and gentlemen. It hasn't been reminded yet, but today is a big anniversary. Two years ago, precisely, Barack Obama was elected on November the 4th, 2008, on the promise that with him, America would rise again, get back on its feet, and deal with all its problems. Quite an agenda. Many, many reforms to be led, yeah, that's true, and many goals to achieve, and not of the least significance. But before I even move on to show you why Europe shouldn't be part of this agenda, I believe we need to clarify some things and get back to the very basics on that matter. I think we got a bit confused because we lost sight of the very simple fact that is Barack Obama is the president of the United States and not the world. Uh, yeah. This might sound obvious and stupid, but it's not. What it means has many implications as to whether or not he should care about Europe. As a nation's president, he represents 300 million American citizens in which he has, not to, not yet, please. He has fueled hope and belief, and so he is accountable before them. He was chosen by and for the people of America to take care of his country. In that sense, pretty much following the basic logic of democracy. But what we can infer from this tells us a lot about Obama's priorities and the position he should hold regarding Europe. Obama is American. He holds American positions and defends American interests. And when he says, yes, we can, you can be sure that he does not mean we as the humankind but rather we, uh, yes. <laughs> I have a question for you. Yeah. Should Europe care about the United States and why or why not? Well, that all depends on what you understand when you say care. If you say that they should keep good relations with them and keep on trading and everything, yes, of course. If we should talk and keep dialogue, democratic dialogue, yeah, of course. But if we should focus as a priority on the United States, then I'm not so sure, because there are many other countries to be dealt with, and I will go further on this later. So I was saying Obama does not mean we as the humankind, but rather we as the best people of America. If we fight for ourselves and our interests, yes, we can deal with our problems and the huge challenges towering over us and still prevail and rule the world. Now, if I ask this question, what is the most dramatic issue facing America, and this, America these days? And it is not likely that you would answer Europe and you would have good reason for this. Surely, surely you thought about the economic crisis, the 10% rate of unemployment, relocations, low wages, increasing poverty, Oh, maybe you thought about the healthcare re system reform, reform, but it's such an out of the way that it lost most of its relevance. And we can't deny, as my colleague Zhu mentioned, that it wasn't that much of a success since it brought both a huge mess in American politics and a large majority of Republicans into the House of Representatives. I won't mention. Uh, no, sorry. I wouldn't mention all the other domestic issues facing America as they are all listed and developed in Obama's speeches in, of 2008. One thing is sure, though, Europe wasn't among them. Yeah? Oh, point, madam. Uh, 
You Madam. say that the Americans are primarily concerned with the financial crisis, but isn't that crisis actually global in its scope? Yes, of course. Uh, I'm not saying at all that the uh, financial crisis uh, is all about America. Actually, it came from America, but it only grew. <laughs> it only grew because, sorry. It only grew because all these countries are so closely related together that when a disease comes, it spreads. But I'm, I'm just saying that there are some consequences to this crisis that Obama should deal with in his country. So, yeah, one thing's true. Europe is on the top priority. And even if Obama didn't mention the foreign relations, I bet he was more thinking of China and Afghanistan rather than making plans about where to sit around the G20 table so as to not hurt, I don't know, and get America's feelings or to avoid looking too tall next to your beloved president. For Europe isn't a problem and isn't a solution either. As my colleague, colleague Omar will show later on, the European economy is sustainable and autonomous by itself. And we, well, we, in, we are working together parallelly, of course, um, in a balanced partnership. But we can't say the same about China. China is getting bigger and bigger every day. Its growth rate is close to 10%. It would be a lie to say we all had it in common. It's already a threat to America. It's already harming its competitiveness and engaging in currency wars and so forth. It's a threat to America. And if the US wants to survive as a leading nation, it should care about American countries and not Europe. China, Brazil, and India are shaping what is going to be the new world order. And how could a country like America turn a blind eye on such a dramatic change? So how could there be space for Europe in the Obama agenda? One could argue that America should care about Europe because it still has much to learn from it, as you can uh, ask advice to your mom about how to deal with problems. But I think America has taken most of a European principles so far, important um, human rights liberalism. So what's the point of looking back to the past? America is grown up now, and they have their own problems. America does not need Europe, it's just a waste of time. This is why I'm solemnly begging the jury to please vote for this motion. Thank you.